Hi, I'm Mark Coniglio, the creator of Isadora. This is tutorial 8. In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to connect cameras to the computer and to use the video images coming from those cameras as a live feed inside of Isadora. Make sure that your cameras are connected. If you're using a piece of external hardware, often you have to install a driver to make sure that works, so make sure that that's all ready to go. And then the next step is to open the Live Capture Settings window, which is in the Input menu. When you do, you'll see this window appear. And the section we're concerned with in today's tutorial is the video input section. Now, when you start Isadora, it looks at all the video devices that are on the system and keeps track of them. And you can see if I click in the device pop-up menu here, it gives me a list of the devices it can see. Right now we have a built-in eyesight or webcam that's in the lid of this computer. Something called a ProView USB, that's actually an external hardware device that accepts a composite video input. And then the last camera is this XHA1, which is the camera we're using to record this tutorial. So to start with, I'll use the webcam that's built into the lid of the computer, and I'll choose that here. Now just choosing it doesn't start the live feed. If you look down here in the bottom where it says Channel 1, there's nothing there, and that's because the live feed has not yet started. But if you click the Start Live Capture button, it will activate the webcam, and in a moment or two, the thumbnail of the live feed will appear here. You may want, as you're setting this up and making sure you've got it set the way you want, you may want to take advantage of this button that says Show Preview. When you click that, you'll get a full-size window that shows you the image that's coming from the camera. Now, at any time, we can switch from one camera to the other in this window. If I go to the device pop-up and I instead choose ProView USB, then we're going to switch to a different camera over here on the table where I can hold my hand up and you can see that image coming from there. So the preview window gives you good feedback about the fact that you're actually getting an image and also it tells you something about the resolution, which is the next step. You have to choose what the resolution of the image should be. Now, in general, if you can, you should run this at a smaller resolution because, of course, the smaller the resolution, the faster the program will perform. But if you want a full quality input, then you would go to the resolution pop-up and choose, in this case, because we're using an NTSC camera, 640 by 480, which is NTSC full or the full resolution video. You'll notice that the show preview window changed its size. Now it's bigger because you're seeing the full resolution image and you might be able to tell even there's some interlacing lines appearing uh, as I wave my hand quickly back and forth. So the thing is, use that video preview only to make sure that things are working. You really don't want to leave it open once you're actually running your patch because of course it consumes some of the CPU, CPU power to simply render the image to the screen. So I'm going to close that preview window now. And for purposes of the demonstration, I'm just going to set this back to 320 by 240 because we don't really need a full resolution image. So we know we've got the live feed. You can see my hand there waving in the section marked channel 1. But now we want to bring that into Isadora and actually use it. So I'm going to go over to this empty scene and I'm going to type video in so that I can find the module called video in watcher. This is the thing that actually delivers the live feed stream into your Isadora patch. Now, I'm going to put that there, and then just so that we can take a look at it, I'm going to add a projector actor here just to the right. And so that we can see that that's working um, before I connect those two, I'm going to go to the output menu and say a four stage preview so that we end up with a small window instead of one filling the screen. So you see nothing yet, the stage is black. But now I'm going to click on Video Out and connect that to the video end of the projector. And you'll see now the image coming from the live feed appearing on the stage. Really, that's all there is to it in terms of the live feed. And at that point, it's good for to, to remember the previous tutorials. I mean, this is just a video, just like any other stream of video like we've gotten from a movie player. That means that anything we've done before where we were using the output of a movie player, we can use this instead. So, for instance, if I wanted to take an effect, let's use dots in this case. I'm going to bring that out between the video end watcher and the projector, and I'm going to disconnect that wire, connect it to the input of dots, and then take the output 
into the projector. And I'll turn the color on and I'll make the dot size a little bit bigger. So now, when I wave my hand in the window, you see that. So we're just taking that live feed and doing an effect on it right there in real time, yeah? That's just like what we saw in one of the previous tutorials where we worked with effects. One of the great features of Isadora is you can have more than one live feed coming in at the same time. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So if we go back to the live capture settings window, I'm now going to go to the channel select input and choose two. And when I do that, all of the sections below become gray because they've not yet been abled. We need to tell Isadora we're going to use channel two. To do that, you simply click the enable check button. And when you do, these things become available down here. So in the device pop-up, now I'm going to choose built-in eyesight for the second channel. And you'll see once I do that and I hit stop live capture and start live capture in a moment, the image coming from the webcam, there I am, is going to appear in the box labeled channel 2. So now we have two video feeds coming in and we want to see that also on the stage. So again, I look for the video in watcher. Here's the video in watcher and the projector. And I connect those together. Now, if I wave my hand, we're seeing something interesting. We're seeing the effect dots, but we're seeing my hand still. And the reason for that is because of this. Here, the channel input on the video in watcher is set to one. That means it's still looking for the video signal coming from channel one of the live feed. But if I change that to two, now the image from the webcam is one of the images and we still have the dots actor providing an effect on my hand. So now we can see that you've got two live feeds going at the same time and you could use both of those in whatever way you wish. So that's basically it. That's how you get it set up to be able to process more than one video stream. The last thing I want to mention is that it's an inherent problem with any DV cameras because of the way that they work that you can't actually have more than one of them on the same Firewire bus. So one thing you won't be able to do, and this goes I think for any program, is to have multiple DV cameras attached to the same bus and try and capture from them at the same time. But in general, if you work with multiple cameras, multiple USB inputs for instance, then you're going to have no problem having multiple feeds.